Today marks International Nurses Day, as Leanne indicated earlier, and the World Health Organization has this year themed it the Year of the Nurse and Midwife in honor of the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale. Now, the day, however, comes at a time when nurses and other healthcare workers are on the front line of a fight against COVID-19. And in South Africa alone, over 500 health workers have tested positive for the coronavirus, this amid claims of personal protective equipment shortages. So to talk more about the plight of nurses in the country and also um, helping us to uh, give a platform to celebrate nurses, we join now via Skype by the president of the Democratic Nursing Organization of South Africa, or DENOSA, Simon Lungwani. Uh, Simon, thanks so much and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much and good morning to the viewers. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity. Let me first start by saying, you know, happy Nurses Day and we appreciate you and uh, would like to extend uh, this uh, particular message on behalf of all South Africans that we really appreciate all that you do for all of us as a nation. Thank you very much. Happy Nurses Day to all the nurses out there. We appreciate our family supporting us during these difficult times. Indeed, today is Nurses Day. We celebrate it, and it couldn't have been more prophetic in that today provides an opportunity and this year as the year of the nurse for us as nurses to contribute towards saving humanity. Uh, we think the World Health could have predicted this year as such, and we cannot be pleased more than what we are at the current moment to contribute towards saving many lives. You would remember that in South Africa, there is more than uh, um, uh, currently uh, 500 health workers who have fallen or tested positive for COVID-19, and more than 200 of those are nurses. And already we have uh, two that have died from COVID-19. May their souls rest in peace. But for us is to say, um, if in South Africa we do not uh, drop the ball in terms of PPE, because we have learned from China, our colleagues telling us that the, the reason why China could flatten the curve was precisely because they were provided with PPE and without compromise. That is the major factor in preventing any spread to nurses across the world. But thank you very much, everyone out there. Just say thank you to your family member who is a nurse and you media. We thank you for appreciating our work that we do because it provides us an opportunity to portray and, and employ our skills, our knowledge, into saving humanity in our country and it is really really grateful that we could contribute to us that we appreciate it Simon, I'm going to come back to the question of uh, personal protective equipment in a moment, but I just want to find out, uh, do, do you think that the public understands uh, enough about what nurses actually do for patients? And what makes people like nurses put themselves on the line to do what they do? <clears throat> Well, for, for now, um, the public is very much appreciative of our work. We could see from the feedback and we see our country, everyone else from the rural areas, the traditional leaders, the religious leaders, political leaders the, and government, everyone else, they have expressed an appreciation and also a disparate dependency on health workers, but particularly on the nurses, because on 24-hour basis, uh, nurses are there for patients throughout. And you can see by our recovery rate in South Africa that indeed our contribution is uh, turning into positive outcomes in this regard. But uh, moreover, for us as professionals, uh, we've been trained, this is more of a calling. Um, this is more of a delicate skill, soft skills that we have been given in the science of nursing, just like um, Florence Nightingale, Mary C. Cole, who were there during the Crimean War, especially also in our country for the Cecilia Makiwani, Albertina Sisulu, uh, Mama Sobukwe, those who were there to impart their softer skills towards saving humanity. So for us, it's more of our calling, but you know, we are human as well. We are anxious because we are not immune to the disease COVID-19 at the current moment. But we know when we go there, if we do our best, if we are supported, if we are given the necessary requirements in terms of PPE, definitely, definitely we'll do our best and we'll see the outcomes in a much better way. We know we are not yet at the peak, 
but we can still do our best according to what we've been trained in terms of our science of nursing. So speaking to your members, have they indicated that there is enough personal protective equipment around or are there still problems? Well, the issue of PPE is a moving target. We see in different areas, there are those provinces that are just difficult in that you'll find that in, the, in that particular province, um, we have seen particularly in the Eastern Cape where managers are just informed that they must constrain the usage of PPE in areas where they have. We find that there is PPE maybe in the depots, but it doesn't reach a nurse in the ward, in the clinic. And uh, some provinces, like um, I seen in Gauteng, some the, where some of those uh, facilities they do have facility, they do have uh, PPE, and they are not constrained in terms of usage. But generally, the problem that we had at the beginning of COVID-19, it seems to be improving gradually is that, that at the current moment that those facilities where nurses are prohibited from utilizing some of those. But we were still re-emphasizing the same message and we're sending it to our employers, private and public. We, we are discouraging and we're, not, we're encouraging our nurses never to touch any patient should they not be provided with the necessary PPE because that will be equal to committing suicide. We rather deal with those cases on daily basis at an instantly and advocating that they be provided for because we have been promised by all employers, including government, that PPE is available and will be made available. Therefore, there should be no expectation for any nurse to go to work or touch a patient without PPE. And just finally, Simon, last night the World Health Organization said that uh, uh, there was a suggestion uh, rather to move the celebration to next year, uh, saying that they would like to make the next 10 years uh, an ongoing celebration of nurses and midwives. What's your response to that? Well, it would be appreciated, but uh, if we were to go um, today throughout unnoticed, it would not be fair, neither it will be a travesty because the contribution of nursing, like I've said, it would have been, it appears as it was a prophecy to provide this opportunity to demonstrate that nursing as a profession and midwifery can contribute towards COVID-19. There's no better, there's no better time and opportunity to display the skills and also to see the outcome of our, and the impact of our profession. So even if next year and then 10 years thereafter is celebrated, this year has to go down, having been known that it was the first year where nurses were unable to gather around and celebrate together. But we must also know that nurses are celebrating today hard on duty as foot soldiers facing the brutal a war against uh, COVID-19. So we appreciate this year and we thank everyone for appreciating our skills and the nurses all over the world. Thank you to our families for supporting us because even when we come back home, we don't know what we are carrying. We don't know whether we have, we, we, we are, we have contracted the disease, but they still provide us with those warm support and meals and everything else. We are really, really appreciated. We can impact more if we are supported, including the employers. We, need, we are also anxious. We need psychosocial support as well. We need the support even in terms of transport to get to work. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much to you, uh, Simon Tlungwane, President of the Democratic Nursing Organization of South Africa, or DENOSA, talking to us about World Nurses Day. It's International Nurses Day today, and all of this in the midst of COVID-19.